Hi, everyone. So I wanted to talk to you today about why you should photograph your neighborhood or where you live or anywhere that you frequent on a consistent basis. Um, a lot of what people do when they're interested in photography is they take their camera out when they're on vacation or someplace that they know is going to be beautiful or just kind of a special day or a day off or something like that. And that's fantastic to do. You should definitely do that. But it really limits the amount of opportunities that you have to take photographs. Um, I think it's a really great practice to integrate photography into your daily life. It doesn't have to be with a huge camera. It can be very uncomfortable to take a huge camera with you on a daily basis. Um, so it can be worth you know, investing in maybe a smaller pancake lens for DSLR if you want to use that. Um, you can get a smaller camera. They're getting, they're still expensive. They're getting cheaper every day. This is the Fuji X100 that I use, Micro Four Thirds or an iPhone. Um, the key is though, we're going to talk about, it's just, you want to take a camera out, any type of camera with you every single day. And you want to shoot in short increments, maybe 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there, maybe leave 15 minutes early and keep your eye open to finding interesting things. And the goal is to try to create interesting photographs anywhere. You know, the, the really best photographers have this knack of, have this knack of taking beautiful or interesting or poignant photographs wherever they are. You know, they might, it, it's, a lot of people will be in this area and they'll just say, oh, there's no photographs here. It's a boring area. But that's not the case. You just have to search for it and you just have to have something. So, you know, we want to talk about that practice. Um, and, and the reason for doing it is it, it expands, you know, your skills as a photographer. You're going to end up, you know, taking photographs 10 times the amount that you would if you just went out on, you know, every few weekends to take photographs. It's going to expand your opportunities and the type of, you know, photographs and type of uh, areas that you take photographs in. Um, so let's look at, uh, I'm going to show you just some images that I've taken. I'm going to screen share. Okay. Sorry about that. It's coming. Okay. So here we are. This is a group of images that I just want to show you based on the neighborhood that I live in, the East Village um, neighborhood of Manhattan. Uh, you know, I happen to live in uh, what is a pretty unique area in terms of content and people and things like that. Um, but so many photographers have done amazing work like this on a daily basis everywhere, over, you know, all over the world. It, it has a completely different look. You know, you may live in suburbia, but you can take some incredible images there. So let's go first. You know, here's an image that I just love of an old building being torn down. Um, there's a lot of that in my neighborhood, which we will talk about. But this is one of those images where, you know, if I didn't have a camera with me while I was walking around on a daily basis, you know, this is something that was only around for a, a day or two, you know, on a random street. Um, the fact that I had my camera with me and I was kind of looking for things and I was, you know, walking to the subway and I took an extra, you know, couple blocks out of the way to see if I could find something, you know, that's, this is now one of my favorite photographs. And the only reason that I got it was because I had a camera with me. Um, here's another kind of, you know, interesting photograph, uh, you know, a really interesting graffiti building that isn't, that wasn't the most photogenic, to be honest, during the day. So I happened to go for a walk during a snowstorm um, and as a fire truck was going by, uh, you know, found this is, you know, the lighting here just adds so much to it. Um, you can compare this to an image of a bank. You know, New York, there's a lot of banks these days. It's actually turning into a real big problem. And, you know, this is kind of something that you wouldn't normally find to be interesting. And I walk down this block every single day from the subway. Uh, and one day, you know, I looked and I saw this plant. You know, if you look here, just this plant sticking up. And it's just so interesting in the stark environment that I had just walked past and it, you know, soul crushing kind of, you know, bank on your way home. There's a million banks. You know, then there's suddenly this like plant sprouting. And I just thought it was a really fascinating thing. Um, you compare that to, you know, the image of a bodega. Um, there's a million bodegas in New York. Uh, and, you know, you can take them for granted just walking by every day. Um, it's kind of the complete opposite of the, you know, the bank with nobody in it. You know, this, there's a lot of life in here. Um, you know, another bodega I walk past, you know, each day. Um, 
you know, I just, I happen to be looking for photographs and, you know, I, I caught this guy who I walked past daily just, you know, with this really look on his face, you know, as he was kind of, you know, pruning these beautiful flowers and it's a, you know, great design. And, but, uh, you know, it's that look in the face and that moment that, you know, is very rare and, and you know, you're not going to see that many moments if you're not, uh, walking around with the camera more often. Um, here's another shot in the rain. I love to take my camera out in the rain. Um, you know, I take, I take it, I throw it around my neck all the time. So I, I end up, it's not that I necessarily go seek out to shoot in the rain, which I do sometimes or in the snow, but I just have my camera out in those situations as well, even though it might be a little bit more uncomfortable to carry it around your neck. You know, I happen to have it. And so I see these really interesting people, these interesting things. Um, you know, this is a corner of two blocks from my house. Um, here's another block I walk past every day. Uh, the East Village is kind of a really interesting neighborhood in terms of gentrification. And, you know, it was the center of punk rock, the center of counterculture. And now it's, you know, completely changing. There's still elements of everything. But this is a, rent a building where they kicked out all the tenants um, and they're gut renovating and raising the rent significantly. Uh, you know, and one day there's they were painting and they happen to paint right up onto the statues and you can see that transition and you can see that gentrification and in just, you know, a picture of the front of a building. Um, this was only this image was only available for one day. Um, I, I, I'm sorry to harp on that many different times, but it's really important. Um, you know, uh, with that gentrification comes things like the brunch scene, you know, uh, just walking by it's, yeah, this is the, yeah, I love this image. You know, you have the kind of interesting outfits you can see on the right here, the, you know, the design of the eating. And then on the, you know, you go all the way to the left and these bright red shoes. Um, and then, you know, on that similar, you have a uh, line for a sample sale. <laughs> I think that's, uh, I don't know. I'll keep my opinions. Um, or the nightlife culture in my neighborhood. Uh, you know, another shot in the rain. I have to have my camera on me. Um, here is, uh, you know, beautiful, just a beautiful image. First of all, you know, there's a lot of shadows and light and, um, you know, the light happened to be perfect at this time and colors. And then you have this just piece of graffiti, uh, out of nowhere, which was there suddenly one day. Um, it's creepy. <laughs> I think it's meant to be creepy. Uh, and that's all, you know, that's really all I can tell. It's, you know, it's a mysterious image. It makes you think, it makes you wonder. Um, and it's beautiful at the same time. Uh, another image that I just love the design of, um, the two bikes happen to be there one day. Um, you know, the colors that, you know, added to everything. Um, my favorite window, uh, you know, walked past this almost daily. Uh, the person's unfortunately not there anymore. It's uh, not as colorful, but you know, you can look at all the details in this um you know in this window it really it was a kind of a, a special thing to walk past it made me happy every day um you know it's you can i photograph people candidly in my neighborhood it, it helps to have a small camera and i know in some areas you know you're you don't want to be candidly photographing your your neighbors uh you don't want to be that creep with the camera <laughs> um so we'll talk about it a little later you know you can int integrate portraiture into that um you know here's an image of a, a a laundromat local that I found very interesting. I think it adds to the whole set of images. Um, you know, a couple images that I really kind of created here, you know, the, there's the, the really fascinating background, um, you know, with all the colors and different ads and things, but, you know, it really wouldn't have been anything, you know, I was just trying to photograph cabs coming by something simple, like something like this to happen. I didn't think it was going to happen as well as it did, but this is an image I, I created and I waited around for, and, you know, it all came together. Um, another image that I, you know, put together, I saw, you know, this, um, stalled project has been there for the last maybe four years, just like that. Um, one day there was this, uh, you know, the truck out front doing, I don't know what it was there for, but it had the, you know, buildings in the front and the graffiti. And then I added the layer of the, the cabs, um, you know, the same, uh, New York dolls and flash dancers. You know, I think it's really interesting. Uh, one third of cabs, if you ever come to New York has that on the top, they have some strip club, uh, meant, uh, ad on them. And so I find it, it can add to certain images. Um, there's a big Puerto Rican community and there's all these little gardens in my neighborhood where, uh, these, these are the remnants of old buildings. There was a lot of drugs and crack in these village, uh, you know, in the seventies and eighties and a lot of building owners decided to burn down their buildings. Um, to uh because you know it, the neighborhood became so poor that it was worth it for them to get the insurance money uh and so the, a lot of buildings just went up in smoke 
um, and the neighborhood took them back. You know, the uh, the Puerto Rican community, the artists, uh, just all the people that you know had a stake in this neighborhood turned those uh, burned down buildings, took them out, you know, took, st uh, st stones out one by one and turned them into these really interesting, uh, gardens. Um, and there's a ton of them left. There's, I don't know, I'm just get, taking a guess, but probably 30 or 40 and they're all really beautiful and they all have their, you know, really interesting designs. Um, you know, if there's any events in your community, uh, that's a great time to shoot. That's a great time to shoot candid images because, you know, people expect you to take a photograph, uh, take a camera in these situations. And a lot of people are around, um, it's good to, you know, photograph when no people are around or in everyday situations, but it's also good to seek out situations where there are a lot of people, um, both together can create a good archive. Um, here's another image. Uh, you know, I just think of this one as a landscape of faces of my neighborhood, you know, diversity and, um, I really, I really love this image. Um, you know, here's some guys that you normally wouldn't think would be comfortable being photographed, you know, happened have my camera on me and, you know, we started talking because of that. And, you know, the guy said, you know, take my picture and, um, you know, it turned into a, you know, a, a moment where I got to, you know, meet someone that I normally wouldn't have been able to meet. Um, you know, here's another image of just, uh, kind of a bunch of different people hanging out. And this is a place I walk past a lot and there's only ever one or two people, but this day it happened to be, you know, packed. It was a particularly cold day. So, um, I think everyone was escaping the cold and the light was just hitting the people just right. And this is, you know, I've walked past this hundreds and hundreds of times and never even thought to take a photograph. And then suddenly this happened. Um, this is a quasi candid photograph. I, um, Jerry's uh, a guy I pass a lot. Um, and so I saw him with the cigarette hanging out of his mouth like that on the corner, uh, standing out of the corner of the, of the uh, newsstand. And so what I did is I kind of got into place here knowing that he was going to go in and I just, you know, set the camera and I pre-focused to the right distance and then just waited for him to walk right in and just look right up at me. So it's sort of a portrait, but it's candid. This is a, you know, candid moment. I didn't, I didn't ask him and it was really before the moment where, you know, he acknowledged me. He just, you know, looked up, um, you know, another portrait. This one, I, I, you know, gave a little nod of my camera, you know, like I was going to take a portrait. Um, same with, uh, same with this one. Um, it, you know, it's amazing if you, if you ask people to, if you can take their portrait, uh, you know, I know it might be uncomfortable for some of you, but you can say something like you're, you're doing a photography class and you're trying to take photographs of your neighborhood or do a, you're doing a, an interesting photographic project, project of what your surroundings are like, and you'll be surprised how people will react. You know, some people, a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some people will say no, but they'll say no nicely. They'll just, it's because they're uncomfortable, uh, being photographed. It's not because they think you're doing anything weird. Um, and it opens up a lot of uh, friendships and opportunities and, you know, it helps you get to know your neighbors and things like that. Um, you know, these are all people that, you know, the camera helped me talk to and now I, you know, I pass and say hi and things like that. Um, I also do a actual, you know, I go out of my way to do interviews and portraits with people in the neighborhood. And so I, I do this and I put it on a local blog, an East Village blog. Um, and it it's amazing the stories you get, you know, when you, create a series and people start reading it and, and what you can create over time. Um, you know, people let you into their homes, uh, which is one of my favorite places to photograph people is in their homes. You know, I always, uh, it, you know, ask if I can, I can do a portrait in their environment and try to find You know, this is this background just spoke for itself, of course, like, you know, anyone would have been like, yeah, stand right there and, and take this photograph. But, uh, you know, to find a, you know, a beautiful place in someone's home to take a photograph will make it much more special for them because they'll be able to remember themselves in their environment. Um, you know, people say, oh, I don't want to photograph. I don't want it in my house. It's too messy. You know, the mess is good. So try to convince them otherwise or, you know, wait till they're comfortable doing it there. Uh, not always possible, but when it is, I always try. Um, you know, things, lighting is just, uh, a really important thing. You know, I, I always try to use natural light when I can. Uh, you can't always, but I try to. Um, getting in really close can, can help. And when you do portraits in the within interviews, when you, I, I always do the interview first because I get the person comfortable with me. Um, you know, if you do the photograph first, they're going to be uncomfortable. Maybe if they know you, that's a different story. But if they don't know you that well, it helps to have this long half an hour plus conversation. And by the end of that, then they're feeling really comfortable. And then you start doing the photographs or you wait to a point in the story where they just look comfortable and they have this great pose on them. And you just say, stop, don't move. And you have your camera ready and you take a quick portrait. Um, that's a very powerful way of, of doing it and how you can get some really incredible photographs. Um, you know, people who, uh, 
you'll be surprised who will let you take their photograph, you know, if you do it the right way. Um, it, 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 it really, most people, uh, not most people, but a lot of people will, surprising amount of people will. Um, and, and they'll open up their stories. Um, I, I love this photograph and I love to talk about it because, you know, it's a, a really, really interesting person. Um, he owns one of the oldest, uh, the oldest um, tattoo parlor in the city. Um, but this is a shot that you get when you're photographing in the middle of, it, it, when you're photographing in the middle of an interview, you know, he's looking, he's thinking, you can see that, you can see what's going on in his mind. And it creates for a really natural, it, it's, it's almost a candid in a portrait shoot. It's a candid shot in a portrait shoot. Um, so I really try to create that um, in a lot of my shots. You know, some of these, they're looking straight at me, of course. But, you know, this and this one too, you know, this is within an interview. He's thinking, he's you know, uh, it, it's, it's a powerful look in the eye. And, you know, this was just created with a bare bulb he had by where we were talking, you know, and I moved it a little bit just to get it better on his face. Um, but, you know, you'll find if you, if you can move around the lighting or if you can get them in the right spot, there will be good lighting in a lot of locations, not, not all, but a lot, you know, window lighting can be fantastic, bare bulbs, lamps. Um, you just have to get them in the right spot. Um, you know, this one kind of speaks for itself. The lighting here is, is amazing. This one, I actually used a little bit of flash. No, I didn't use flash in any of the other ones. This one, I used flash just to fill her in because this is the one part with the lighting wasn't going on. But I, I used a very subtle flash, like not much, so that you, it fills her up and, and, and evens her out, but it doesn't necessarily scream that it's a, a flash shot. You know, it could have just been the lighting from here, from the, the Pyramid Club. Um, so yeah, let me go back to uh, uh, end the screen share. Whoop. So yeah, so uh, I just uh, hope that you guys, you know, decide to do this. I hope that you decide to start photographing, you know, just throw a camera on your neck or use your iPhone. Try to make it like going to the gym. It only has to be five minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes a day. It can be with any camera. It can be with your phone. Um, just set aside time every day. Uh, every other day, every few days, uh, something consistent. And you'll find that it, it's not only that your photography's, your, your photographs are going to improve because you're out there more often, but you're actually photographing more often. So you're going to become a better photographer. Um, you know, it's really time spent photographing is what makes you a better photographer. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this chat. Um, see you next time.